and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new stencils. And first up we have our grassy stencil, we have hillside stencils, grassy hillside stencils, a cloudy stencil, and a scene builder stencil in a bayou style. These stencils are all about building different scenes and we're gonna start off by looking at the grassy stencil. These new stencils have some pretty cool properties to them. And so we're gonna take a look at the first one here, which are these awesome grid lines. So we have a grid line every half of an inch, but we've also gone ahead and added little grid lines at the four and a quarter line and at the five and a half line. That way it's really easy to line up with the standard size card. And we have that on both the left side and the right side. We also have an X right in the center to help you line things up. The bottom half of the stencil helps you create that gorgeous grass on there. So all you're going to do is put it onto your card and you're going to do some ink blending with a foam ink blending tool or a blending brush or whatever you've got on hand and you'll see how that's going to line up. So right here you can see that grass is going to line up. We can easily line up on either side there at the five and a half inch marks and we're going to create our grass. Now the next cool property of this stencil is that it's got a mask built in. So all you have to do is just shift that stencil down and that's going to cover up your grass so that you can easily create the sky without worrying about any of that ink or splattering or anything that you're doing getting onto that beautiful grass that you just created. And right here you can see how we have the lines at four and a quarter here so it's going to line up perfectly with a portrait or kind of tall card. Now here are our hillside stencils. So in this pack, you actually get three different hillsides, which is super cool, and they're in three different styles. Once again, we have those awesome grid lines and the marks at four and a quarter and five and a half, and that little X in the center as well. And here are what those different hillsides look like. So we have a really bumpy hill. We also have a single slope hill. And we have what we call a simple hillside, which is a nice kind of mound. So you can create all different scenes. You can mix and match these together or use them on their own. Just as in our grassy stencil, when you shift these down, you're going to get the mask for your hill. That means you can protect your hill as you create your sky or your scene above that hill. So I love that the mask is included in these ones as well. The other really cool thing about these is you can get really creative with them. So you can shift them on your card to create different hills and flip them over to do a hill coming from the other direction. So you can see here how you can kind of change it and move it around on your card and also shift the angles of these as well. And any of these you can flip over and get a different style of hill. So how you mix and match these you can create really, really cool scenes. We'll be showing you how to create a really cool kind of layered hill pasture scene a little bit later in the video. So next up we have our grassy hillside stencils. And these are so gorgeous because we have that beautiful grass, but this time with that hill detail. There are three different stencils in this pack and it also has the really bumpy hill, the mound simple style hill, and the single slope hill. And you can see just how gorgeous that grass looks. Super, super easy to create a really beautiful dynamic scene. And of course, at the top, we have the mask again. So you shift that stencil down and protect your grass as you create your scene. Just as we did with our hillside stencils, you can also take these and flip them over to create different styles of hills and shift them and change their angles so that you can get a bunch of different hill styles depending on what scene that you're going for. The other really cool thing is that these hills are the same style slope whether you use the hillsides or the grassy hillsides. So they're really easy to mix and match together as well because those slopes are the exact same. So I love that you can easily use these on a card and get really creative with them. Here is our cloudy stencil, and this one might be my personal favorite. It's so cool and it helps you create a really cool cloudy scene. Once again, we have our grid lines, we have the marks at the four and a quarter and five and a half, and we have that X in the center. And on this stencil, we have a decoration on all four sides. And as you can see, it creates four different styles of clouds. You can use these clouds on their own, just as we've done here to create some really magical and cool styles. You can also use them and easily continue them. So we ink blended here and then we just went ahead and shifted the whole stencil down and finished that. So you could actually go across an entire like long card, even a scrapbook layout. You can get really creative with them. And then to create cool backgrounds, all you need to do is take it and shift it in ink and shift in ink. And we're going to be showing you how to do that in just a little bit. 
Now here is our Seam Builder Stencils Bayou, and this one's really cool because there's two stencils that actually layer over top of each other. These stencils once again have those awesome grid lines which I just love, and they also have a really cool feature. So you're gonna be putting those little leaves down first, and then you're gonna be doing your vines, and as you look at the vines, you'll see there's kind of a little etching of the shape of the leaf that's gonna help you easily line these two up. So it's so easy to use, and it looks really cool, and once again, we'll be showing you this in just a little bit. But first off, we're gonna start off by just using one of those hillside stencils. So we here have a five and a half by four and a quarter inch piece of cardstock and you'll see here that that's going to line up perfectly with those grid lines. We're going to use some Distress Oxide ink here but any ink would work, Distress inks, Lawn Fun inks, anything you can think of. We're going to use a blender brush and we're going to start on the stencil and go down onto the stencil. You'll notice that I'm just holding the stencil in place with my hand. I like to do it this way. You can also take some tape, some low tack tape and just tape that down to your work surface so that you don't need to worry about holding it with your hand. And you'll see by starting on and off it's creating this beautiful hillside. As I finished my hill, I wanted it to have a little bit more shading. Well, that's really easy. I can take my stencil and really easily move it, line it up with my hill again because I've got those great grid lines there to help me out. And I'm going to take a darker green ink and just add that towards the top of the hill. And you can see I'm just adding a little bit, kind of willy-nilly because I like that it looks a little bit imperfect because to me that looks like a grassy hill when there's kind of little splotches and dark and light areas of color. And you can see just how gorgeous that looks. Now here's where we're gonna create that pasture type effect by shifting our stencil. If you did this in browns, it would look like a beautiful little sandy bank as well. So you can get really creative with this. So we've just taken that whole stencil and we've just shifted the angle of it. And once again, we're just gonna bring on some of that ink starting on the stencil and then off. And you can see how beautiful that looks layered. Now I'm going to take my stamp chamois here and just clean off my ink because we're going to be flipping it over to get some hillsides in the other direction. So that ink wipes off really, really easily. And then we're going to go ahead, flip it over, and now create a hill coming from the other direction. So now we can layer these on top of each other again. So we're going to start off with that lighter green ink and build that up. And then we're going to add some of that darker green on top of that. And you'll see how this starts forming and looking absolutely gorgeous. We're going to shift it up and change the angle again. You can see that you could keep going with this depending on what kind of look that you're going for for your card. And isn't that just stunning? It took me just a couple of minutes to do and it looks so dynamic like you've layered pieces of cardstock but it's just ink. So here is a comparison between a plain hill and more of that kind of pasture style. Now right here is the grassy stencil, and you may recall that we used this in our Intro to Dandy Day video, and if you haven't seen that video yet, we'll make sure to link it in the description below. We're going to review some of the inking that we did in that video really quickly here, and you can see that in this case, instead of holding it down with our hands, we're going to put down some tape to hold it in place, but we're going to do the same exact motion, which is starting on the stencil and moving off the stencil to build up color. We'll bring in a darker ink just for the very top of this grass to create a cool gradient effect and then we can peel up the stencil. This is my favorite part and we can see that gorgeous grass there. So the next thing we need to do is create our sky and once again we're going to take that stencil and we're going to use it as a mask. So we're going to line that up with the grass we just created and then hold that in place again with our tape and now we can start to create our sky without worrying about creating any kind of mess. To fill in that sky that lines up right with our grass, we're going to be building up that color. We're going to be starting off from the top of the sky going down, but also starting onto the stencil and moving up, making sure to fill in all of that area so that we're going to have this perfect blend between our green grass and our yellow sky. And here you can see how gorgeous that is and this beautiful dynamic effect we got with just one stencil. Another way to use the mask portion of your stencil is to protect it from things like ink splattering. So it works for things other than just ink blending. So we're gonna take our grass and we're gonna lay that over it and then splatter our gold paint. We only want the gold paint to be up in the sky. So that stencil is a perfect way to protect our grass. And now that we have our perfectly green grass that has no gold sparkles on it and our perfect yellow sky that has the gold sparkles, we can add all of our characters from Dandy Day and this card is all done. I love that it's so dynamic and so gorgeous and I just love using these stencils. Next up, it's time to learn how to use the cloudy stencil. So in this case, we're gonna use some Merman ink, which is my personal favorite for skies, and we're gonna be using the stencil to create a cloud background that takes our entire piece of cardstock. 
So we're gonna start off with one of the edges of clouds. It doesn't matter which one. We're gonna pick up some ink with our blender brush. We're gonna hold that stencil down. We're gonna start on the stencil and lightly, very lightly, move up onto the cardstock. I like to start very light and build my color up because I really want these to look like light, airy clouds. Then I will take my stencil, shift it down, turn it 90 degrees, and do the same process, starting onto the stencil and moving on, but with a different style of cloud. And this is gonna start filling in my background with these beautiful clouds that are all different from each other. So once again, we're gonna turn it 90 degrees, and you'll see I'll kind of shift it on my cardstock back and forth, deciding what I think is gonna look pretty. You can also shift the angle of the stencil as well. We'll turn it 90 degrees, we're gonna shift it onto the cardstock, shift the angle and the placement of those clouds, and ink it up, do the same thing, shift it again, kind of decide where it's going to look pretty, add some ink, turn it, ink it, and finish up our sky. Now you can get different looks with these clouds, not only by turning and shifting them, but also by spreading them out in a different way. So the ones I did there were very light and very close together. In this case, I'm going to do them a little bit darker, but spread them further apart. So you'll see I'm leaving more of a gap between the clouds. And it's just a different look, and I just love both of them. It really just depends on what card I'm creating. So once again, I'm turning, shifting, kind of changing the angle up, looking, see what's going to look pretty. I don't want any of my patterns to repeat. I like every single cloud to look different and then turn and shift so we've added way less clouds this time and we're just going to kind of play around and see what it looks like and then we're going to show you a little comparison between what these look like so on the left there we have our light one with more clouds on the right we have less clouds and darker and then here is one where there's even more clouds and darker ink totally different looks it just depends on what you're looking for for your card now that we have such a beautiful sky, we have to create with it, right? So we're going to take some Hello Sunshine paper at five and a half by four and a quarter and layer that onto a standard size card base. And then we're going to take those beautiful clouds and we're going to layer that onto our pattern paper. And you can see how pretty this is looking already. Next up, we're going to be taking some cilantro cardstock and we're going to die cut that with a simple grassy hillsides die. Once that's all die cut, we can go ahead and stamp our sentiment that's going to be coming from the really high five stamp set and it says jumping up to say hi. So we're going to stamp that out in some black licorice ink onto that grass and then layer that grass onto our cute scene here. To fill in our scene, we're going to be using characters from Really High Five, which are so super cute. And so I've gone ahead and stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of these images. We're going to lay them on the card, kind of see what looks good, because we're going to do a little stamping onto those clouds too. So kind of playing around with what the placement might be. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp the word wee from the stamp set, because I just thought that would be really cute with the balloons and the trampoline jumping. Once that's stamping done, I'm just going to move everything off the card, add some foam squares to the back, and just place them back into the placement that I had earlier. And what I like to do is I take my phone and I always snap a picture, and then I can easily look at the phone and kind of put them back exactly where I wanted them. We're going to add some strength to the balloons, and you can see that this card is all done and so super cute. I made another one just like it, and here you can see the clouds are a little bit darker. So I love that you can play around and just have a lot of fun with different ink colors and lots of cool effects. Next, we're going to be using the Bayou stencil. And so we've die cut a stitched rectangle here out of some white cardstock. We're gonna take out the two step stencils and we're gonna start with the leaves. I'm gonna take my piece of paper here and I'm gonna hold it in place with a piece of tape onto my craft mat and then see where I wanna line up these leaves. And in this case, we're gonna line up the top of the leaves with the stitching on the rectangle. We're recreating a card by Jess today and she did that and I thought it looked so pretty. So once we've got that perfect placement there and those grid lines are gonna help us keep it nice and straight, we're gonna hold that in place with some more low tack tape, some post-it note tape here. And we'll start to bring this ink on. So we're gonna be bringing the ink onto the stencil. This is the Twisted Citron color. And you'll see we're kind of starting off of the stencil and moving on to it here, building up that color. I like seeing imperfections, kind of lightness and darkness in the leaves because it makes them all look different and special from each other. So we're gonna build that ink up. And then my favorite part, we get to remove the stencil and see what it's going to look like underneath. And it's already so pretty. So here are our vines. And remember how we looked at this earlier, that there's a little etching in this stencil that shows you where those leaves are? That's gonna make it really easy to line these up exactly with the leaves. So we're gonna take that, line it up, and we're gonna hold it in place with some of that tape so that we can start to do some inking here. And we're gonna take some peeled paint distress ink, which is a darker green color, and we're gonna build that color up just like we've been doing before. So just kind of moving across that stencil, building it up until it looks really pretty. And so you can kind of see those 
those leaves through and see the contrast between the colors. So I kept building up that color until it was dark enough to give a nice contrast to the lighter green leaves we just created. Now, once again, the best part, we get to remove the stencil, and isn't that gorgeous? I am absolutely in love with these. The cool thing is, too, it looks like a little bayou now, but if we flipped it over, it would be the most beautiful seaweed for a card. Now, to kind of help tie this whole thing into the scene, we're going to take some olive distress ink here and just blend a little bit up at the top, and it's going to make it look even more magical, like maybe there's more leaves and vines going up even higher outside the card. Next, we're going to use a different part of the stencil that I never expected to use. And when Jess did this here in the office, she just blew my mind. She used the bottom part of the stencil to help create a pond for her swans. So we're actually going to shift that stencil up and use that nice straight line at the bottom of the stencil. We'll start on the stencil and off, and we're going to use some tumble glass ink, a nice light blue, and we're going to build that color up. Then we're going to go ahead and move to broken china, a medium blue, and build that one up. And then after we have that color on there, we'll add a little bit of the chipped sapphire and we'll darken it up just up towards the top. So you can see just how pretty that's looking. I absolutely love this idea of using all the parts of the stencil, including even the flat part at the very bottom. And now we're going to remove that stencil and look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? The most perfect reflecting pond. Next, we're going to take our stenciled scene and we're going to put it in our Misty because we're going to do some really cool kind of faux mirror stamping here. So we're going to be taking out the Swan Soiree stamp set, which is so cute, and it has two swans in it that are facing each other. So we're going to pick one of those swans and we're going to put her right here in the center of the card, and we're going to stamp her right on the edge of that pond. So I made sure to look and made sure that the edge of the swan was lining up right with the edge of that pond, and we're going to stamp that in some jet black ink so we can add a little Copic color later. Then we're going to lift that guy up and we're going to take the other swan which was facing in the other direction and we're going to be stamping that swan upside down. It's going to look like we did mirror stamping but we actually didn't have to at all. So this is really really cool and a really fun way to create the look of a reflection. So once again we lined up that swan right with the edge of that reflecting pond and we're going to use some gray ink here. Just grab some hippo ink and that way we can stamp it and have it be a little bit lighter since it is a reflection into this pond. The gray ink will also be dulled a little bit by that blue distress oxide and it's going to give this really cool look of a reflection like we did mirror stamping but we didn't even have to. We're going to stamp a crown onto that swan and we're also going to be adding a little eyelash onto that swan. So the one that's facing in the other direction doesn't have an eyelash so we're just going to take a gray marker and add that eyelash in and we'll add a faint yellow color to the crown. We'll be doing this to the beak of the swan in a second as well. We're also going to stamp out the sentiment, which is, I just swan to say thanks, which is so cute and adorable for this cute little swan scene. And then now we can add that color in. So for the beak, we're going to be adding a dark orange up top and a much lighter orange at the bottom since it's a reflection. And for our top swan, we're going to take a warm gray marker and just add some teeny little dots just to add a little extra detail so that she just has a little something going on up there. We'll also give her a little rosy cheek, and then we're going to take some stamp colored and die cut images from the Swan Soiree stamp set and layer those on. So of course we've got to give her a crown to match the one with the crown below, and then we're just going to add some lily pads, lotus flowers, cocktails, just to help set our scene. We'll also take some clear sequins and layer those towards the bottom of the pond there just to kind of help with this idea of a sparkly reflection. So once we've got those in place, we can pick it up, add some liquid glue with the glue tube, and hold that back in place just like that. And you can see just how cute this is looking already. So for our card base, we have a standard size card at four and a quarter by five and a half and some raspberry cardstock, which is a nice bold red and kind of pinky color that's going to go really nice with those lotus flowers. We'll add some tape runner to that card base and then layer our inked scene on top. And this card is all done. I love that it used the Bayou stencil in multiple ways, one to create those vines and two to create the reflecting pond. And the idea of doing that little kind of fake mirror stamping, oh my goodness, I love it so much. For this card, we're going to be using the Grassy Hillside stencils, and we're going to actually layer all three of these onto one card. So we're going to take our stencil here, kind of see what it's going to look like, flip it over, get that perfect little bumpy hill. We'll hold that in place with some tape, and then we can take our inks and add some ink on there. So we're going to be using Freshly Cut Grass, which is the perfect color for a grassy hillside. We're going to start on the stencil and move off, building up that color on this cool grassy hillside. 
we're making sure to concentrate the color up towards the top of the grass to create kind of a cool gradient effect. And now we can lift that grass up and you can see how beautiful that looks. Now we're gonna take the other style of hillside and layer that on top of this grass here. So we're gonna kind of find the perfect placement. Once it looks really good, we can hold that in place with some tape and once again, bring that freshly cut grass ink onto the card. Once we've built up that color enough to kind of match the one at the bottom, we can remove that stencil and move on to the last stencil. So this is gonna be the one that's kind of the mound style, kind of the simple hillside. Once again, we're gonna kind of shift that, shift the angle until it looks really nice, hold that in place with some tape. And then once again, we're gonna do the same motion. So we're gonna be bringing on our freshly cut grass ink and just building it up, keeping it darker towards the top. And I love how these look all layered on top of each other. Next, we'll take that same stencil and we're gonna shift it down so that it becomes our mask. So we're gonna cover up that grass. We're actually gonna lift up our piece of cardstock here and just tape that stencil to the back of the cardstock. So that's another great way to hold your stencil in place. It's just to add a piece of tape on either side and that's gonna hold it. And now we can start to create our ink and we're gonna use the brand new Kitty Pool ink, which is a really nice light turquoisey blue. We're gonna start on that stencil and move off, building up that sky all around that grass. Once we have that sky built up around the grass, we can move up to the rest of the card, filling in the sky all the way to the top. Now that we have our scene stenciled, we're gonna take out the Easter before and after stamp set, which is a brand new stamp set. We're gonna stamp, color, and die cut a bunch of the images from this set, and they are so cute. There's these cute little bunnies decorating Easter eggs and hanging out in the little Easter basket. So we're gonna take all of these images and place them around the card and just kind of see how they're gonna look. And what's amazing to me is that it's a completely flat background, but it just looks so dynamic. To help fill in the sky, we're gonna take out some simple puffy clouds and white cardstock, and we're gonna use those for the sentiment here. So we're gonna be using the happy, happy, happy stamp sets, and we're gonna stamp out in some guava ink the happy Easter sentiment. And I love the idea of the sentiment being in the card. Then we can go ahead and start to layer these clouds onto the card, and we can trim off any of the excess so that the sky looks continuous like it's just going on forever. For a little extra sparkle and shine, we're gonna add some clear sequins and attach them with some liquid glue with the glue tube. And you'll see just how pretty that looks. And this cute, simple little Easter card is all done. And I just love that stenciled background. Next up, we're gonna be using one of the hillside stencils, but with some glitter gel. So this is gonna be super cool. So we're gonna take out some of the Hello Sunshine Remix paper. This is the May paper, and we're gonna be using the back of it for that great blue grid line. And we're gonna be die cutting that with a stitched rectangle. We'll add some removable adhesive to the back of that stitched rectangle, and we're gonna layer that just onto a piece of scratch cardstock here, and we're gonna be taking out one of our awesome hillside dies. Now we're gonna kind of place it around the card, see what might look nice. You can change the angle, kind of mess around with it. Hold that in place with some tape as well. And now we're gonna take out some of this glitter gel. So there's a lot of cool kind of three-dimensional type things that you can add to stencils. We're just gonna take a little spatula here and kind of build it up around the stencil, making sure to go all the way over towards the top of the stencil to make sure that we have enough going on that edge. So we're just gonna spread that out with that spatula and just kind of keep moving it around. And you can start to see that glittery hillside start to appear. We're gonna keep layering that glitter gel until it looks like the whole thing is nice and solid. And then of course, the best part, we're gonna remove the stencil and you're gonna see just how beautiful this looks. It's this magical hillside that's gonna go perfect with this whole starry theme that we're gonna be working with. So we're gonna be taking a larger stitch rectangle and die cutting some guava cardstock. And we're gonna layer that whole glittery hillside panel right on top of that cardstock. We're gonna be working with one of my favorite new stamp sets and that's Superstar. And we're gonna take a bunch of the little stars from the set, use some Peachy King ink on some ballet slippers cardstock here. And we're gonna actually create our own custom pattern, which is so much fun. So you can see, we just have to go around the edges. We don't need to worry about the inside because eventually that pink panel is going to be on top of the card. So that's kind of our guide. We're gonna fill in that panel with one of the solid stars. And I just love the look of this. I need to remember to do this more and more on my cards because creating your own custom background is so much fun. So we've taken some liquid glue and layered that panel onto the guava piece. And now we're gonna take some more of that Hello Sunshine paper. And we're gonna add this nice thick strip here to the left side of the card. And I'm really loving the layout of this card that Shari created. I can't wait to use this layout with other designs. 
we can trim off any of that excess paper and then we're going to take out a sentiment banner die here. We're going to die cut that from some mermaid ink and we're going to be stamping You're a Star from the stamp set in some black licorice ink towards the end of that banner. We'll add some foam tape to the back of the banner and then we can layer that onto our panel and trim off any of the excess. After that, we'll add some foam tape to the back of the entire pink panel with our glittered hillside and we can layer that onto the card and start to work in setting our scene. We've stamped, colored, and cut out a bunch of the images from the Superstar stamp set and we're going to be adding those on with liquid glue for the stars and foam tape for the mouse and the telescope. And this scene is just adorable. I love that some of those constellations are hanging off the edge of that panel. We're going to add a cute little smiley face to the star and add him on with some foam squares. And this card is just so cute. I love that glittered hillside. I love the whole layout of it. It's so much fun and would definitely make somebody smile. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And first up, we have this super sweet card by Audrey that uses our Mushroom House mixed with the new Dandy Day stamp set. Her clouds in the background are gorgeous and I love that stenciled grass. Here, Megan used that cloud stencil to create the most beautiful scene for her adorable little ladybugs. And here, I love how Kara created a scallop treat box and she inked all over the box with both the grass and the clouds. And it's absolutely stunning. It's such a cute and creative way to decorate a treat box. Kara created a gorgeous sky with the cloudy stencil and then filled it with our awesome new stitched balloon stackables, really high five. And I love the reveal wheel circle sentiments in that balloon. Here, Letitia got super creative and she used the clouds to create a beautiful rainbow cloud background, not just using blues. And then she's got that gorgeous vine up there done in some glitter paste, which I just love. I love how Elise created a pink sky with the cloudy backdrop. It's absolutely gorgeous and a perfect backdrop for her birds and branches. And here, Lynette created a beautiful grassy and cloudy scene for her dandy day mice. I love how Audrey used the hillside stencil for sand in this case for her cute pirate and those clouds are gorgeous in the sky for her magic iris. And here I love how Yanea combined blues and purples into her sky to create the most beautiful magical scene. Here Yanea got super creative and she turned that bayou stencil upside down and created seaweed and she used the hillside stencils to create the most beautiful ocean waves so the possibilities really are endless. I cannot wait to see the incredible cards and scenes that you guys create with these brand new stencils so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!